Hey, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here, and today we're looking at Tesla's Q2 production numbers, along with delivery numbers from the United States and Europe, and also how countries are progressing from ICE vehicles to fully electric. But before we begin, thank you to all the Patreons that make these episodes possible, and as always, none of this is financial advice. And for any Australian viewers wanting to hire a Tesla vehicle, make sure to check out Tesla Taxi. Links and promo codes will be in the description below. So let's get started. In Q2, Tesla produced a record 206,000 vehicles, which means that they grew production by 151% year over year, an impressive achievement considering there were significant headwinds, such as chip shortages. When we look at total deliveries, we can see that the chart of deliveries is almost identical to the chart of production, and that's of course because Tesla pretty much sell all the vehicles that they produce. Now, let's go around the world and see how certain brands' models are performing. Starting off in the United States, and we can see that the Model Y and the Model 3 are again totally dominating the US market, while the Chevy Bolt comes in third place with just over 11,000 sales, followed by the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Volkswagen ID4, the Nissan Leaf, Porsche Taycan, and Audi e-tron, which is really struggling to get any sort of traction in the US market. No pun intended. One other way to look at the data from the United States is to break up sales by brand, and when we do, we can see just how large Tesla's lead is. Moving on to Europe, where Tesla quietly had their best quarter for Model 3 deliveries, with almost 36,000 deliveries for Q2. And which markets performed the best in Europe? One country was the United Kingdom, as Tesla delivered a record 7,764 Model 3s, meaning that they have now had three consecutive record quarters. And here's how the Model 3 compares to other vehicles over the last six months in the UK. And note, this is not against other EVs, but against other ICE vehicles. And we can see that the Model 3 is not far off from cracking into the top five in the UK market. When we look at fully electric vehicles as a percentage of new vehicles sold, we can see that the trend is clearly going up, and going forward in future episodes, I'm going to be including these charts as they show us just how far along we are in terms of EV adoption and the EV revolution as a whole. On a final point in the UK, Tesla has built a custom Model 3 police vehicle for evaluation, and I look forward to finding out if the UK make the switch to fully electric vehicles for their police force. Moving on to Germany, and another record number of Model 3 deliveries in Q2. And with the strong quarter, we can see that the Model 3 is now the second best selling EV in Germany, behind the Volkswagen E-Up. When it comes to new vehicles sold, Germany recorded 12.2% of their sales that were fully electric, up from 7.3% at the same time last year. So all in all, really strong quarter in Germany for Tesla and electric vehicles as a whole but all eyes will be on the completion of the Tesla Gigafactory and when production will start. Moving on to France, which is a market that Tesla has not had much success in. Its sales have mostly been between 1 and 2,000 per quarter throughout 2019 and 2020, but so far in 2021, Tesla has sold more Model 3s in the last six months than they did in the first two years since the Model 3 became available. And I believe this is due to a price drop of the Standard Range Plus and government incentives increasing from 3,000 to 7,000 euros. And I believe these incentives will end at the end of July. So it'll be interesting to see how the liveries shape up in Q3 and Q4. Next, we can see that the Model 3 has been the best selling EV in France for the first half of 2021, beating out the Renault Zoe and the Peugeot 208 EV. Finally for France, pure battery EVs are making up 10.5% of all new cars sold, which was the same percentage as this time last year. Moving on to Norway, we can see another solid quarter with 3,700 Model 3s delivered. And compared to other EVs, the Model 3 still takes top spot in Norway ahead of the Volkswagen ID4 and the Audi e-tron. And when we look at the percentage of new vehicles sold, two out of every three cars sold were fully electric. And hopefully, this chart gets to 100% by 2025, which is when Norway will ban the sale of ICE vehicles. So if Norway is not a wake-up call for other manufacturers, I don't know what is. The final European country that we're going to be looking at is the Netherlands, 
and this is going to be the most lumpy European market for Tesla, as sales were through the roof when there were generous government incentives, and not surprisingly, sales dropped in the following quarters. The top selling EV in the Netherlands for 2021 is the Skoda Enyaq, which I'm being told has some comparable specs to the Model Y with a lower price point. So that's something that I think will be worth checking out. If I come across anything interesting there, I'll be sure to make a short episode about it. And when we look at the percentage of a new vehicle sold being fully electric, we can see the same sort of lumpy data, with higher percentages of EV sold around the time the government set up incentives for EVs. So that completes Europe. The Tesla Model 3 was the top selling vehicle from January to May of 2021, almost twice as popular as the next best VW ID3 and Renault Zoe. And just on some final points, I just briefly want to mention another market that I haven't discussed much, and one that Tesla's doing pretty well in, which is South Korea, where the Tesla Model Y is a top selling EV, while the Model 3 comes in third place behind the Hyundai Ioniq. And the final country I want to mention is Australia, in which 1,500 Model 3s were sent, which I believe is the largest shipment to Australia thus far. And this comes at a time when the Model 3 has come down in price two times this year, coupled with a $3,000 government incentive, so it'll be interesting to see how well the Model 3 sells with the lower price. So that wraps up this episode, and stay tuned, as I'll soon be releasing a separate video update on China, and also release the next episode on the Rise of Tesla documentary series, the second half of 2018 that will feature one of the most turbulent times in Tesla's history. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I know it's been a lot of data to go through. And yeah, if you want to support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do so. So until next time, I'll see you soon.